Hey guys, welcome back to Coachella. In today's video, I want to share with you guys. Oh, excuse me, so sleepy. In today's video, I want to share with you guys 10 culture shock experiences while living in Australia. So I come from Indonesia, the so-called neighbor of Australia. Funny enough, the two countries are almost the exact opposite of each other in so many ways. Why am I so squinty? If you're about to come to Australia for the first time, I guarantee you will be experiencing all this stuff that I'm about to mention. So let's just get into it. What is going on? But remember, this is coming from the perspective of an Indonesian, meaning that these are practically stuff that we don't have in Indonesia, but they do in Australia. So if you're not from Indonesia, chances are you are already experiencing this culture shock. Okay, number one. Kangaroo road sign. This one is one of my favorite. When I first arrived in Australia, there are two things that filled my phone gallery, the outback and kangaroos. Because if you drive anywhere outside the city areas, you basically only see the outback. So outback is this remote area of nothingness. It's just full of bushes. It's a common term in Australia and definitely a lot of kangaroos. And for whatever reason at a time, I thought kangaroos are endangered, protected animals. I didn't know that they are as wild as stray dogs in Indonesia. While in Australia, dogs aren't allowed to be roaming in the street or else they're gonna get caught and put in a shelter. But in Indonesia, dogs and cats are considered to be stray animals. They get ran over a lot. It's pretty sad. But here it's the kangaroos, hence the sign. You'd be surprised how many times I almost ran over a kangaroo in the highway. <laughs> And insurance companies even have a coverage in the event of collisions with wild animals. How cool is that? Next, their walk habit. So Australians love walking in their spare time so much. I'm not talking about jogging. Just simply walk around the block or even the mountain to refresh their mind, take a break from work, get some fresh air, and at some random times too. They go for a walk at two in the morning. Coming from a country where people drive to the shop 300 meters away, I got tired so much from walking here. And like this one time my friend asked me if I want to go for a walk, I thought he meant like to the mountain, right? But no, he was like just around the neighborhood. I was like, why? See, because I never thought walking is an option for me to refresh my mind. Because if you walk in Indonesia at any time of the day, you'll be sweating like a waterfall. So if my Indonesian friends ask me to go for a walk, they probably mean to go for a walk at the mall, where the aircon's really cool. Next, I have no free Wi-Fi at cafes. This one's obviously not for all cafes. I've seen a lot of eateries and restaurants with free Wi-Fi in there. But I'm talking about just in general. In Indonesia, you can go to any restaurant, any cafe, and almost all of them will have free Wi-Fi. It's super common for Indonesians to ask the waiter for the password of the Wi-Fi. As soon as you sit down at a cafe, the first thing you do is ask for the Wi-Fi, even before you start ordering. I noticed that's probably because the internet in Indonesia is pretty expensive for a lot of people. So restaurants are taking advantage of free Wi-Fi to get more customers to get it. While in Australia, people pay for their internet in bulk. They usually even get like a contract with plan to pay for their phone and the data at the same time. And the data is usually like unlimited as well. Next is their drinking culture. In Indonesia, drinking alcohol is considered to be a luxurious thing. You do this in a club when you're having a night out with your friends. Maybe if you go out for Korean barbecue or some special dinner, because people are obsessed with soju there. But yeah, drinking in Indonesia only happens at special events and prices are ridiculous there. So a bottle of just such an average wine in Indonesia can cost like $90. There's a wine as low as $3 in Australia. 
it's stupid cheap. It doesn't even make sense, right? So naturally, alcohol is part of Australian's culture. It is nothing luxurious. People drink anywhere at any time. At sport events, lunch, birthdays, funerals, even at baby showers. And definitely weddings. It's part of their social life. Hey! Next, I have RBT or speed vans. RBT stands for Random Breath Test. The Australians are taking drink driving offence very seriously. Under no circumstances are you allowed to drive under the influence of alcohol. So every now and then, the police will have this random check to see if the driver's been drinking or not by asking them to breathe into a breathalyzer. And these kind of random checks don't just happen on the weekend, like Friday, Saturday. They do it on weekdays too, like a random Wednesday in the afternoon. It's not even rare anymore because, remember, the drinking culture. And you'll be in so much trouble if they catch you even slightly drunk while you're driving. Same goes with speed vents. In a lot of places, mainly in city areas, you usually find speed cameras. It is to catch people who drive too fast, obviously. But then, other than this spot, the police are also being cheeky and place some speed vents at random places and random time. The vents are usually wide, and if anyone wondering how this works, they basically have this sensor that's set to take a photo if you go over speed limit. It's a high speed camera and apparently they can catch as fast as 300 km per hour. But in English they call it speed gun. I don't know if it's shaped like an actual gun or not. But yeah, once they catch your plate number, they'll send you the fine directly to your house. So this kind of system will never work in Indonesia because our license plates are customized and even fake 80% of the time. So that's not gonna work. Next is the driving rule. Still in the world of driving, this one is a definitely completely different from Indonesia. So first, everyone in the car must wear a seatbelt. And I mean everyone, even the people at the back. If you fail to do this, there'll be fine apply between $300 to $1,400 and it'll be at the driver's fault. So many taxi drivers here refuse to start driving if the drunk passengers at the back don't want to wear a seatbelt because, you know, it'll be at the driver's fault. Meanwhile, in Indonesia, the driver doesn't even wear a seatbelt. Second, babies and toddlers must be seated on the baby seat or seat booster. They also have a tight seat belt so they can't go anywhere. When my nephew came to Australia, he would cry a lot every time we asked him to sit on a baby seat because he was so used to running around inside the car in Indonesia. And then a standard car with five seaters only, including the driver, can only sit five people here. No bargaining on this one too. If you fail to do this or if you have an extra person in the car, more than five, you'll get fined too. Big money. But in Indonesia, a five-seater car can sit, I don't know, eight, nine people. We just squeeze everyone in there. Hi, Michael. Who is it? Michael. Michael. Hi. 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 Next, people don't ask their photos taken here. One thing I learned here is that it's better to use a tripod or your own hand if you want to take a photo of you and your family than to ask someone to take the photo of you. But okay, it's a different story if you're at a tourist attraction where everyone is taking photos there. You can go up to someone and ask politely and nicely to take a photo of you and your friends. But I'm talking about places like restaurants, movie theaters, random places to take photos. This is where I see the differences between here and Indonesia. People in Indonesia take photos a lot, like a lot, and literally everywhere. I mean, in a toilet, on a street, at a park, in the middle of the mall, in front of a fire hydrant, you name it. But the most common one is in a restaurant. And it's more than okay in Indonesia to ask the waiter to take photos of you and your friends. The waitress sometimes even offers if they want to take a boomerang clip, like one of those effects in Insta Story. And people are not embarrassed anymore to do it in public or ask the waitress to take photos of them 10 minutes straight. But not here. Don't do that to your waitress. Consider to be rude because they might be busy unless they offer. And if they do, don't take up too much of their time. Three photos are plenty. So yeah, taking photos is not 
a common habit of Australians. Next, I have the small talk. If you have worked in Australian hospitality industry, you know what I'm talking about. Many Australians love to chat. It's a part of their personality that I love. As soon as you come into a store, for example, they'll ask you how you're doing, they ask if you need a hand, they ask if you've been shopping for the whole day, judging from the many bags you're carrying. They ask whether you have much planned for the weekend, and if you tell them you're looking for a dress to go for your friend's birthday that night, for example, they'll ask you what the theme of the party is, how old your friend is turning, where are you guys going for dinner? and they'll get so excited for you and they'll proceed to tell you what their plan is for the weekend but they're just being friendly about it, they're not pushy at all imagine if the same thing happens in Indonesia people will be like, what the fuck? mind your own business you creep I sense that Indonesian people are very private and they don't like being approached to especially by, you know, a retail worker Next is the pedestrian crossings. If you're driving here and see a crosswalk, you must stop for the pedestrians who are crossing the road with or without the traffic light. Some pedestrian crossings are placed on a road without a traffic light because maybe it's in a busy area like the mall or shopping center and it's the pedestrian right to cross the street without having to wait for the car to stop. <laughs> right. Hey, don't tell me how to live my life. Did they see the comments? Yeah. <laughs> so obviously we have the same crosswalk in Indonesia that does the exact same thing for the pedestrians to cross but the rule doesn't apply the same in there. If you try to cross the street on that across in Indonesia without trying to stop the cars in front of you, it's straight up suicide. Okay, last but not least, it's their working culture. Another mind-blowing culture shock for me, this one. So the legal age of working in Australia is 13. Although people generally start working part-time when they're 14 or 15, a lot of places like restaurants and fast food chains hire teenagers or high school students because their pay rate is obviously much lower. But the surprising part to me is that these teenagers still choose to work with this low pay to make money. I don't know how they are raised in Australia because I didn't grow up here. But it seems to me like they earn their pocket money by working part-time. And it doesn't mean that their family is poor or struggling. Your parents can be as rich as owning a company and they'll still ask you to work at KFC to teach you that you gotta work to earn money. You not to be spoiled. So kids here are taught from the very young age that just because their parents are wealthy, that doesn't get them the luxury of endless pocket money. And I feel like this is the beginning of their fair relationship. You guys must be familiar with the stereotype of Asian girls or even Indonesian girls for not paying for their shit on a date. Well, don't be surprised if you date someone from this country or any Western countries basically and they expect you to split the bills on a date or take turns to pay for the bills. And it doesn't mean they're stingy but it's just an implication that you're your own person, you're an independent person. You're able to get a job and pay for yourself. You don't expect your partner to pay for everything that you buy. So yeah, I'm rooting for this mindset. It's time for us to stop thinking that men have to pay for everything. But it also doesn't mean that Indonesian girls are gold diggers, right? We were just raised in a culture where men are the leader of the relationship. And they're supposed to treat women that way in exchange for us staying at home, raising kids and put the food on the table. I don't know, it sounds hella sexist, but it means well, I promise. The one thing I'm still trying to get used to is the idea of people paying rent to their parents, their own parents. Look, I don't know how this works in Indonesia either, but what I know for sure is that if my parents had an empty house, they would give it to any of their kids to live for free. No questions needed. But here, I know some people who still live under the same roof with their parents and they pay rent to their parents because simply they're considered to be adults. I mean, isn't that the whole idea of not moving out of your parents' house so you don't have to pay rent? I can understand if the kid is paying for utility bills, but parents here, from what I see, really won't give their kids any house or any property that they own for free. Just 
like that. I can't. So for as long as the parents live, that house belongs to them and the kids must pay rent. It's somehow logical, but I'm just not used to it yet. Like in Indonesia, giving your child a house or a property to live is a part of responsibility as a parent, at least until the kids are married. They even usually give a house to their kids as a wedding gift, you know. So that's it for today's video guys. Sorry if that went too long. Hope you enjoyed this video and find it useful somehow. If you want to come to Australia and maybe you don't know what to expect, it's a very fun place to live. It's cultural, you get to meet different kind of people. But yeah, watch my other videos if you want to know more about it. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Say bye!